Geometry Rush 2.2 has been in development for over six years now, and given that weight and how many bugs persist in the leaked betas of the update, I really don't think we need to add to the current stress that Rob is under. So instead, I'm going to posit some ideas for potential additions or improvements for update 2.3, and we can start building up his future stress. This video is only relevant if 2.3 ever comes out. Geometry Rush Meltdown in a world were both released between 2.0 and 2.1, meaning all the features shown in those games are now in the full version. So my question is, why are they not playable through the main game? The icons from them are still in the full game, and are just completely inaccessible to players who want to use them. Tapping the locks in the icon selection screen doesn't even work, probably because the levels and their corresponding achievement data aren't in the game anymore. I think it's time to merge the games together into the full version. Add a menu, maybe on the coming soon screen that takes you to the Meltdown and World levels. And when 2. if 2.2 comes out, then you can add Sub-Zero to that menu as well. I'm honestly surprised RobTub didn't do this in like 2.11 or something. Geometry Ash is a truly global game, and why not embrace that diversity by implementing region-based content to the game? You can host in-game creator contests for people in North America, at the same time as level races in Asia, all the while there's nothing happened in Australia. What's that? What if people don't like region locks? Well, I mean, obviously you can get around them, of course. You just have to use the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN provider that allows you to safely navigate the web using military-grade encryption. Do you ever connect to public Wi-Fi at a restaurant or a cafe? Then some of your data may be insecure and vulnerable. I'm in college right now and live on campus at my school, so I'm literally sharing my internet connection with thousands of other people at the same time. So it's good to have some peace of mind that they can't see what I'm doing. And this isn't even talking about the aforementioned region locked content. Playing a game and you want to connect to the same servers as your friends in Asia? Done. Want to watch something on Netflix just to find out that it's only available in Azerbaijan? Well, one click and you're there, and then you can enjoy, uh, whatever it is you could be watching that's only available in Azerbaijan. Surfshark can be installed on unlimited devices with only a single account, works on just about every operating system made in the last 20 years, has 24-7 support via live chat or email, and doesn't log any of your personal data. With 3,200 servers across 65 countries, you'll always be able to find a fit for wherever you want to virtually be. You can try out Surfshark for three months completely free, with an 83% discount afterwards if you do decide to continue with a subscription, and a 30-day money-back guarantee with promo code SDSLAYER, link in the description, or by scanning the QR code on the screen now. Huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. This isn't an addition, this is more so a removal. Uh, so all the spin-off games have this annoying coming soon screen, and let's be honest guys, these games are never getting updated again. So Robtop, I would say you should stop crushing the dreams of all the children who are eagerly waiting for the next GD World Island and just remove the coming soon screen from all the spin-off games. I don't even want to explain this one. I'm just gonna play this clip from when I thought of this idea and I'm gonna let it do the talking for me. Rob Top should, should add a white orb. Like, not the toggle orb, like a white orb that like has its own like distinct thing. Like, there's a black one. Why isn't there a white one? Uh, he should make a... He should make a brown orb that closes the game if you hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> That one's really fucking good. <laughs> Proud orb, and if you hit it, it just closes the game. Zanny would fucking love that, dude. I can make concept art of it really quick. <laughs> GD has been advertising custom keybinds coming soon since the game released on PC, so I think it's high time we actually get this feature. I don't know anything about how GD's code is written, but this does not sound like something that would be that hard to implement unless Rob, like, hard-coded all the inputs in a million different places. I mean, it's kind of standard practice for games that release nowadays to have custom keybinds, so it's kind of surprising that Geometry Ash doesn't have this yet. So I asked you guys for some ideas in my community tab post a little while ago, and this is one that I saw a couple of times, and I also thought of it on my own, so it's good to see some uniformity among the replies. Rob really needs to add some sort of custom song support to the game. Maybe if a creator is using a custom song, when they upload the level, they can also drag and drop the song in with it to upload. From there, the game could assign a random ID to the song to avoid conflicts with other songs and them having the same ID, the same way that YouTube assigns video URLs. And when someone else wants to download the song, just pull it from a database. Easy peasy, probably. 
this idea is ripped straight from C. Volton's Better Info mod, adding extra filters to other menus like your created levels or your uploaded levels, etc. It's pretty limiting to only allow filtering search results just from the regular search menu, and this doesn't seem like it'd be very hard to implement either. I feel like Robtop could literally just copy and paste the existing filter menu to a bunch of the other places. Now this is actually a really interesting idea suggested in my community post, and thinking about it, I totally agree. Since every play shut down, GD players that play on mobile have literally no way to record their runs unless they screen record their entire play session and then trim the video down afterwards. And that's not really feasible given the iPhone storage space. So yeah, implement a replay system of sorts. Hypixel does this on Minecraft with most of their mini games, and most major GPU companies have software that comes bundled with a shadow play program. So implementing something similar into GD doesn't sound that hard. Maybe you can just log the clicks on each attempt, and when the player dies, discard the clicks, and then start over. If the player completes the level, offer them the ability to save the clicks to maybe a file or something, like a macro. Or if it's possible to do this all at once, then you can actually just render the full video for them. Same guy from the last idea had this one as well, and honestly, I know a lot of people have been wanting this for a really long time. I think some GD mods actually do implement this, although I don't know how well they work, but a native integration for autosaving would be really useful in my opinion, especially given how poorly optimized GD is right now. You can let people set autosaving intervals, maybe even different ones for different levels. If it takes up too much power or space or something, then maybe just sort of save a light version of their progress, like only the last half of the level, and if the game crashes or something, then you can just merge it with the already existing save level, and obviously if the player manually saves then you can just overwrite the whole thing. A hard version of every main level with better rewards. Good idea. This one is something I've seen people asking for for literal years, since 1.9 even. I don't think this would be too hard to do. I mean, most texture packs are just copies of the resources folder with stuff changed, so you could probably just implement a way to sort of apply other resource folders to the game. And if it's too hard to auto-update it with it instantly, you could just give the player a pop-up saying that they need to restart the game for the changes to take effect. Yeah, this one is pretty similar to the last one. I think that some mods already do this, but it would be really convenient to allow people to save icon kits natively. It'd be useful for me, especially whenever I need to get gameplay of a level with another person's icon as a joke. So I'm not exactly sure if this is what this comment meant, but I do think it'd be useful to be able to pin levels to the top of your created levels menu without having to manually move them to the top over and over, especially if you're like me and you copy official levels all the time for videos, so your actual levels get pushed all the way to like the fifth page. So yeah, that's a bunch of ideas for stuff that I think could be added into GD. The video title advertises 2.3, but I don't really care when they get added as long as they do at some point. A lot of you guys suggested editor features like new triggers or orbs or whatever, but those weren't exactly what I was looking for for this video, but I do appreciate all the responses. So with that, I think I'll end the video here. I will not be scripting another video for a while because this one took a long time to do. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.